three chapter four of spiritual dialogue by saint catherine of genoa this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by anne boulet part three chapter four the lord o oh, beloved soul knowest thou who it is that employs my love he whose heart is pure and empty of every other love when he has found it he remains content and satisfied although he knows not my mode of operation nor his own condition because love works in secret and subtlety without external show such a one is continually occupied yet without occupation he is bound yet knows not who holds him he is in prison without an outlet the soul can avail herself of neither her understanding her memory nor her will and seems like a thing insensate dumb and blind because the divine love has overpowered all the sensibilities of both soul and body and therefore the soul and spirit finding themselves so transformed from their wonted habit of loving and acting and secretly and strongly swayed by a higher love are constrained to ask o lord what manner of love is this what is this love which is ever changing man from good to better continually bringing him nearer to his end and yet as he approaches it more closely plunges him into ever profounder ignorance of his situation man in this state is kept alive by the rays of love with which god pierces his heart and which return to heaven in ardent sighs if he did not find this relief he would die through the vehemence of this fire sometimes it so restrains him that he can neither speak nor sigh in order that its work may be more quickly done but it does not hold him long in this condition because he cannot remain in it and live then the soul enlightened inflamed with divine love and filled with sweetness and delight exclaims soul o oh, love the soul that feels thee begins even in this world to possess eternal life but thou lord dost conceal this work even from its possessor lest he should spoil it by making it his own o oh, love he who feels thee understands thee not he who desires to comprehend thee cannot know thee o oh, love our life our blessedness our rest divine love brings with it every good and banishes every evil o oh, heart wounded with divine love thou art for ever incurable and dying of this sweet wound thou dost enter upon never-ending life o oh, fire of love what doest thou in man thou purifiest him as gold is purified by fire and dost conduct him with thee to that country and that end for which he was created love is a divine flame and as material fire ever burns and consumes according to its nature so in man the love of god is by its nature ever working toward its end and for its part never ceases to benefit and serve him who it holds so dear he who does not know its power has but himself to blame since god never tires of doing good to man while he is in this life and has always the most tender love for him o oh, love i can no longer be silent and yet i cannot speak as i desire of thy sweet and gentle operation for i am filled with love which inspires me with the wish to speak but deprives me of the power within myself i speak with the heart and with the mind but when i would pronounce the words something checks me and i find myself betrayed by this poor tongue i would be silent but i cannot for still the instinct for speech urges me on if i could utter that love of which my heart is full i think that every other heart would be inflamed however remote from love it might be before i leave this life i long to speak once of this love to speak of it as i feel it within me of its effects in me and of what it requires of him into whom it is infused and whom it fills to overflowing with a sweetness above all sweetness and with an indescribable content so great that for it one would willingly be burned alive for god unites a certain zeal for this love by the power of which man disregards all contradictions however so great o oh, love powerful and sweet 
happy is he who is possessed by thee for thou dost strengthen defend and preserve him from all ills of body and soul thou gently guidest all things to their end and never dost abandon man thou art ever faithful thou givest light against the deceit of the devil the malice of the world and against ourselves who are so full of self and so perverse this love is so illuminative and efficacious that it draws all imperfections from their secret caverns that we may apply the remedy and purge ourselves from them this love which rules and governs our will in order that it may grow strong and firm to resist temptation so occupies the affections and the intellect that they desire not beside the memory is engrossed and the powers of the soul are satisfied so that love remains her sole possessor and inhabitant and she allows nothing else to enter there love exhales a continual sweet perfume by which man suffers himself to be allured and so powerful is this fragrance that however great may be the torments through which he passes to salvation there is no martyrdom he would not suffer gladly to attain it o oh, love no words of mine can express the sweetness and delight with which thou fillest the heart it remains enclosed within and by speaking it is inflamed whoever hears or reads these words without the sentiment of love makes little account of them and they pass by him like the wind but if i could express the joy the pleasure and the peace which it brings to the beloved heart all men who hear or read these words would surrender without resistance for it is so adapted to the human heart that at its first touch it opens wide its door although man can never receive this celestial gift till he is free from every other love if the heart receives but the smallest drop it so earnestly desires to increase it that it rates as nothing all the goods of this world with this love man conquers the evil habits which are a hindrance to him and in its strength he stands ever ready to perform great deeds. End of part three, chapter four.